I desire you would remember the ladies, Abigail Adams. While John Adams' wife spoke to him in regards to creating more equality for women, as the founding fathers were writing the constitutional documents for the new country, these words ring true for those who study history as well. So, where do we start? They say behind that every, every great man is a great woman, which is very true. We could look at Abigail Adams or Mary Washington and Martha Washington, George Washington's mother and wife respectively. We could learn more about Lucy Knox, wife of General Henry Knox, or the mother of the iconic American flag, Betsy Ross. There are so many women who influenced the American Revolution, either by the way they raised or supported the famous men of the Revolution, or those that stepped up to make a difference directly. Both Lucy Knox and Martha Washington were encamped at Valley Forge uh, with the Continental Army, serving as cooks, nurses, and seamstresses during the brutal winter. Both are remembered in memoirs as being a tremendous support to their husbands and the other men in the Army. What about those women who actually took up direct action for the cause? Having served in the military myself, I must admit I am quickly drawn to learn more about those ladies. There's Nancy Hart, who defeated a group of British soldiers who were searching her home and interrogating her about a Whig leader who was supposed to have stopped there. She shot one soldier and captured, then hung the rest. Sybil Ludington had her own Revere-esque ride. When British soldiers were burning nearby Danbury, Connecticut, a rider came to warn her father, Colonel Henry Ludington, and to gather the militia. Unfamiliar with the area, the rider was unable to go any further. Sixteen-year-old Sybil rode throughout the night, dodging and evading British soldiers and loyalists to round up the militia. In November of 1776, British soldiers attacked Fort Washington. When her husband was fatally wounded while manning a cannon, Margaret Corbin stood in his place and con continued to fire the cannon in defense of the fort. But I want to talk to some about someone else for this lecture. The woman I would like to highlight actually combines the actions of a number of the ladies I've already mentioned and more. Catherine Moore Berry was born in Piedmont, South Carolina on October 22, 1752. Known as Kate to her family, she was the oldest of 10 children. She lived in Piedmont until she was 15 years old when she married Andrew Berry and moved to Walnut Grove Plantation in Roebuck, South Carolina. She had three living children with her husband. So when the colonies began eyeing independence from Great Britain, Andrew Berry joined the Continental Army and eventually garnered the rank of general by the end of the war. Catherine did not sit idly by during this time, though. She first used her skills and knowledge of the South Carolina landscape as a spy and scout for the Continental Army. She worked as a camp follower with her husband's unit and has been reported to have actually joined in battles alongside her husband. In 1781, Catherine was home with her young child when she was informed of the advance of General Cornwallis and his British troops. Ordered to stamp out the resistance in the southern colonies, Cornwallis was riding through South Carolina. General Morgan, commander of the Continental Forces in the area, knew that he was heavily outmanned by the British troops. He turned to his second-in-command's wife to help gather patriotic militia men to aid in the fight. The story goes that Catherine tied her child to the bedpost and quickly skirted into the night. Using her familiarity with the old Indian trails, Catherine was able to travel the countryside and gather a large force of militia to join General Morgan and push back General Cornwallis. Another part of the lore of the Battle of Cow Cowpens is that Catherine Moore Berry helped General Morgan design and carry out an ambush on advancing British troops, beating them back soundly and leading to the retreat of General Cornwallis. His retreat led him from South Carolina into Virginia, straight into the arms of General George Washington at Yorktown, and Cornwallis' eventual surrender. So for her actions as a spy, messenger, and her actions in battle, Catherine Moore Berry received her numerous medals and citations from the Continental Army. After the War for Independence, Catherine and her husband returned to Walnut Grove. Catherine passed away on September 23, 1823, and was buried next to her husband in the family cemetery.